Welcome back. Well, we're going to take the next few webcasts to look at that prophecy given in Rome in the presence of Pope Paul VI in 1975. And let me say, this is a powerful and anointed word, and I believe a confirmed word. And the reason I say that is St. Paul says that we're not to despise prophetic utterances, but to test everything and retain that which is good. And one of the ways in which we test prophecy is to listen to what the rest of the body of Christ is saying. And this prophecy given in Rome resonates with what our Blessed Mother has been saying. It resonates with what the Holy Fathers have been saying and warning about the spiritual dangers in our time. And it resonates with much of the other, what we call private revelation in many quarters of the church that is being given right now. It's a prophetic and anointed word that deserves our attention and our discernment. And so I think the prophet Habakkuk could say of this word that the vision still has its time presses on to fulfillment and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. And so without any further delay, let's look at this prophecy which I believe is now pressing on to fulfillment in our times. Jesus allegedly said, because I love you. Now let's just stop for a moment and look at those first four words. Because I love you. Jesus is giving us a context for the rest of this prophecy. In fact, he's giving us a context for everything that is happening and going to happen in the world. And it is because he loves us. God permits all things and can make all things work to the good for those who love him. And God permits natural disasters. He permits persecutions, trials in tribulations because he orders them towards the salvation of souls. And if we can understand that everything else and some of the difficult things in this prophecy given in Rome, if we can understand that they are given to us because he loves us, then we have the strength to persevere. Because you know, I have many people writing me right now and saying, Mark, it seems like evil is overcoming, the evil is winning and it's shaking my faith. But we have to understand that God holds everything in the palm of his hand. As it says in the book of Sirach, the Most High possesses all knowledge and sees from of old the things that are to come. He makes known the past and the future and reveals the deepest secrets. And so when God gives us a prophecy like the one we're looking at now, it's not like God is shooting from the hip, you know, suddenly this is something new. God has ordained and foreseen this from the very beginning of time and that should bring you comfort. God is absolutely in control. You know, again, turning back to that word from Pope John Paul, that prophetic word where he said the church is now facing the final confrontation, he also said that it lies within the plans of divine providence. And so the Lord tells us it's because he loves us that these things are about to happen. Let's go back again to that prophecy where he says, because I love you, I want to show you what I'm doing in the world today. I want to prepare you for what is to come. This echoes the words that Jesus spoke to the apostles in the Gospel of John when he spoke to them about persecutions and the trials that would come to the church. Jesus said, I have said all this to you to keep you from falling away, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And so Jesus is revealing to us what is coming, I believe, in our times because he wants to keep us from falling away. Again, from being shaken in our faith when we see great uh, numbers of people apostatizing, falling away from the faith, when we see great uh, disasters and things happening in the world that we're, I think we're already beginning to see right now, that we'll recall that the Lord said these things would come, and if we remember that the Lord said them, we'll also remember His promise that He'll be with us until the end of time. Jesus said, I have said this to you, that in me you may have peace in the world. You have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And so when we see these things beginning to happen, when we see, as it were, that evil seems to be triumphing, remember, Jesus has overcome the world, and these things, evil will not triumph, but his sacred heart will triumph in our times. It will conquer because he loves us. Ultimately, what Jesus is saying in this first few sentences, couple sentences of this prophecy is do not be afraid. Don't be afraid of the things because some of these things in this prophecy that we're going to look at are difficult, they're hard. Some of them are glorious and beautiful, 
but some of them are difficult. And ultimately, Jesus is saying, don't be afraid, I'm with you. And all of this is ordered toward the salvation of souls because I love you. But you know, it's this fear. It's this fear of our times that is driving many people uh, into a hole. You know, uh, Archbishop Chaput said, fear is the disease of our age. It's like a cancer that is eating away in the church. It's driving many people, as I said, into a hole where they're no longer witnessing. Why? Because they're afraid to challenge the status quo. They're no longer preaching from the pulpit or they're no longer sharing the gospel in the workplace, in the marketplace, because, you know, they want to tolerate other people's faith. They don't want to foist their religion on others. They want to be tolerant. And besides, faith is a private thing, right? Bull. It's not a private thing. Jesus said that we are to be like a light, like a city on a hill. We are to be like a lamp on a lampstand, to shine, to be salt and light to the world. We are not to be hidden. But this fear is like a disease, like a cancer, eating away at the hearts of many people in the world. We have to come out of it. One of the cardinals in our church said, The greatest weakness in an apostle is fear. What gives rise to fear is lack of confidence in the power of the Lord. Yes, listen, if you're relying on your own knowledge, your wisdom, your charismatic ability to razzle and dazzle people, be afraid, be very afraid. But if you trust in the Lord and in the power of the Holy Spirit, you have nothing to be afraid of. And this is why I think Catherine Doherty, beautiful, I love Catherine Doherty. She, she began the Apostolate of Madonna house in, in Cumbermere, Ontario. And, and, and Catherine said in her little mandate, she said to not be afraid to go into the hearts of men Brothers and sisters, don't be afraid to come with the truth because the truth is Jesus. The truth is power and light. Don't be afraid to go into the hearts of men and to bring them the gospel. You know, I think of that movie. I can't remember if I mentioned this in the last webcast or not, but that, that movie Avatar that came out. We've heard stories of people being suicidal after that movie. Why? Because they look at the paradise of that world, step out of the theater and see the disaster of our times, and they're suicidal and depressed. We need to go into the hearts of men and realize they are longing and thirsting and hungering for the truth. They're hungering for paradise. And so, don't be afraid. Trust in the power of God. You and I have to really get to this place of abandonment. And that's part of this prophecy that we're going to discuss. Because I think the times are coming where you and I as Christians, many of us are not going to have anything. And we need to be utterly dependent upon God. You need to be confident in the power of the Lord. For Christians, the moment has arrived to free themselves from a false inferiority complex, to be valiant witnesses of Christ. We can't be valiant unless we begin to utterly depend and trust in the power of Jesus. That when Pope Paul VI says the mission of the church is to evangelize, that means every single one of us, and if we're called to evangelize, if that's our mission, then God's going to give us the grace and the light and the power and the strength and whatever we need, the words and so on, to do what we need to do. And so, again, because I love you, Jesus says, I want you to know the things that are coming. I want you to be prepared for what is to come. And this preparation is to prepare us to be valiant witnesses in this time, whether it's in darkness or light, whether it's in disaster or relief, whether it's in blessing or among the curse that this culture of death is already bringing upon the world. And so do not be afraid. There's more to say about this prophecy. Some things that are very serious, some of them are hard to hear, and some of them are glorious and wonderful. I hope you'll come back and listen to future webcasts now as we begin to and continue to unfold the prophecy of 1975. God bless each of you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid.